What does it mean to be a man in today's evolving world? How do we as men not only step up as men in this world, but transform the definition of masculinity itself? To be the lovers, the heroes, and the role models that the world so desperately craves. How do we begin to recreate our connection to manhood? This is that movement. We are ushering in a new generation of men and a new definition of masculine power to radically transform your sex life, your love life, your work life, and your world. I am Destin Garrick, and this is The Evolved Masculine, redefining sex, power, and success. Welcome, everybody. Last week, I was in Byron Bay, Australia for the Taste of Love Festival, and I gave my presentation on the evolved masculine, as I do. Only this time, it came out quite different, quite different than I've done in the past. Um, I think it's because I was giving that presentation uh, during basically the same time period that the Trump inauguration was occurring in the United States, and it brought up a lot for me. And I knew that right from there, there was the uh, multi-million women's march happening all over the world, and I just... <sighs> I needed to do something. And I really brought my focus in this presentation on the aspect of the evolved masculine that's about really knowing who you are, who you are, what your principles and values are, and what you're willing to really be a stand for in this world. And then to challenge the audience, I don't know, 100 something people, to be that stand. So. Without further ado, do check it out and um, let me know your thoughts. What comes up for you? Send me an email at destin, D-E-S-T-I-N, at evolvedmasculine.com. What comes up for you? What's, what are you really passionate about? What riles you up? What are you willing to do? So this week's podcast is the recording from that presentation. Enjoy. This is my roughly five minute version of the evolved masculine. I'm going to ask for you to close your eyes for a moment. As I speak these words, I want you to just allow yourself to feel them, to notice what feels resonant for you. What do you see as I sit, speak these words? What do you hear? What else does it bring up for you? What do you, what do you hear and say, yes, that's me, I'm, yeah, I'm really good there. What do you hear and say, oh, that's not me, or oh, I'm not very good at that. What has you feel like, oh, I want more of that? <laughs> the evolved masculine is grounded. He's solid in himself. He knows who he is. He knows what he stands for. He is connected to this earth. He's connected to himself as a primal animal, the human animal. And he can tap into the powerful energies that exist from that mm, natural, primal, animalistic part of himself. <laughs> he is a master of this material plane, including handling the financial aspect of living in this world today, including being able to walk this earth, engage with this manifest plane. He is safe and secure in his own being, so safe and secure in his own being that others, men and women, naturally feel safe and secure in his presence. He is a sexual being. He owns his sexuality. He owns his pleasure. He owns his desires. He knows his desires. He's released all shame and has moved into a place of truly embracing and celebrating his sexuality. Not as something that controls him, but not as something that's repressed or suppressed either, but rather a powerful energetic force that's integrated into the whole of who he is, mind, body, and spirit. This is the evolved masculine. 
the evolved masculine is a creative being. He lives his life as art, knowing that every action that he takes, every word that he speaks, every thought that he thinks is another brushstroke on the masterpiece that is his life. What do you mean? The evolved masculine claims his power. He chooses to be powerful. Not the old paradigm power over structure. I am going to feel powerful by making you feel less. But rather that deep source of personal empowerment that rises up from within him. That by its very nature, the more he steps into, the more he shines that power, the more he invites others to shine themselves. We have all masculine knows how to manifest his desires. He's cultivated a powerful will. He can make things happen. He can see a vision and then take action as needed to make it so. Obstacles, so what? Life brings obstacles. He'll go around the obstacle, over the obstacle, under the obstacle, through the obstacle. If he wants it, he'll make it so. The evolved masculine is connected to his heart. He loves purely, freely, fiercely. He can pour forth love, and he knows how to truly open and receive love. He knows he is deserving of love. He allows love in. He can create connection and intimacy with anyone that he chooses, as he chooses. Unrestricted by old societal ideas of who's okay to love, when's okay to love, what genders are okay to love. He's connected to his true being. He loves who and how he feels. The evolved masculine is fully expressed. He speaks his truth. He lives a life of authenticity, knowing his desires, his own fears, his own boundaries, and able to speak and maintain those truths. He says what he does, he does what he says, and with that, he is trusted. With that, he trusts himself. The evolved masculine has, a, has cultivated a fierce intellect that is balanced with a strong intuition and a capacity to still and quiet that mind, find stillness. That knowing without thought and the evolved masculine is connected to spirit, to source, to the universe itself. Not relegated to any particular dogma, by his own unique personal connection. And with that, he has found a sense of spiritual purpose, a reason for being, why he is here, what he is a representative of, what he is a stand for, what he will live for, what he would be willing to die for, knowing, feeling that interconnectedness between himself and all that is. No separation between him and her. He is integrated. He is healthy and feminine. He is unafraid of her. He has made peace with her within and without. Because stepping into your evolved masculine does not mean denying your feminine. She is part of you. She is within you. And there is a difference between expressing and being in touch with your feminine versus retreating into your feminine because you have wounds and fears around your masculine. Have access, express freely. You have it all within you. Who are you capable of being? Who is the man that you are choosing to become in this world? Let that settle. Notice what, what you feel inside of your body. Notice what's different now than it was when you first walked into the auditorium today. And before we move into the second half of this, I want to open it up to you all. I know that was a lot. Um, 
last summer it was pretty intense. I'm kind of surprising myself, actually. <laughs> it feels good. Um, in mid-December, I was doing my annual, you know, 2016 is coming to a close, writing about that, setting in intentions and ideas for 2017, and um, I usually use like an A word or phrase to, to just be my word or phrase for the year. And without, without thought, just floating out of my fingertips came 2017, be a stand. And when I wrote it, I stopped and I regret it and I was like, I don't think I fully know yet what, what that's going to mean. But it came through strongly. And this was part of that, so thank you. Questions, comments, thoughts and concerns. Can we get a little bit more light? <laughs> um, just, we are the guy that apparently isn't a good guy if he stands there while something's going down. Does, would, he's not like, he's not a good, um, are you suggesting that, like, he should, like, like he should be doing more, more. something. Some, um, something. More is good. <laughs> at, like at least say something or say something, do something. I, 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 I'm working on my book in theory. It's moving slowly, and and uh, my friend Catherine and Gerardi, who's been helping me with it, she. We were in this conversation around this, and she's like, "Well, you know, like so when you're talking about." Um, uh, being a stand for something, doing something, and like this, this can be done on the, you know, just to, uh, how a man just like lives, lives his life and engages with, with with his life, right? I'm like, no, actually, no. Maybe that was a, maybe that was okay at one time. We are in difficult times. We are. We it. The only way to not. Be aware is willful ignorance. And what that looks like for you, I can't say. What that means and how it shows up, I can't say. And the truth is, I can't say, I mean, I can't say anything about how, how you live your life, what choices you make. Only you can ultimately do that. My hope is that this, you know, oh, it said that the masculine. The masculine is strengthened through challenge. This is your fucking challenge. What are you gonna do? I don't like. I don't care. You, your expression is going to look very different from my own. There are so many different ways. But unfortunately, I mean, this is this is this is the thing about our time. Like, there are so many things, quote unquote, wrong. There are so many things that aren't the way that you and I both know that they could be. That you have no end of, of choices of like what what do you want to help repair? Is it is it how people relate to love and sex? Is it how men and women relate to one another? Is it something around our economic system, the raping and pillaging of this planet, our banking system, how businesses are are done and handled? Is it something else entirely? No end of choices. How big, how small, what's your call? But I challenge you to do something. We have this one wild, precious life. Then for the not good guy, could your, um, or could your program help him challenge himself? Thank you. Well, he is not a plant. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and uh, and then some. The roots of the evolved masculine path has been covering three main areas. What I call uh, deep, deep masculine empowerment or evolved masculine empowerment. Your sense of yourself, your challenging of yourself. You're becoming more of a man that you know deep in your heart. You know deep in your heart you're capable of being. That sense of purpose, a sense of strength, and power. 
The second main area is sexual self-mastery. Understanding and knowing your sexuality, understanding the sexual energy that flows through you, which of course has some nice marketable fun perks of uh, becoming truly a choice over when and if you ejaculate, let that one land, uh, <laughs> experiencing full body orgasms versus genitally based, what was that again? Uh, <laughs> Uh, non ejaculatory orgasms, male multiple orgasms. Those are nice and marketable, don't get me wrong, they're wonderful. <laughs> Very. And uh, to me, it's uh, that aspect of sexual self mastery as path of life mastery. Like, sexual energy is powerful life force energy. To master this life force energy that flows through your body, your sexual energy is core to life. And the third is understanding and gratifying women. Who is this? new, emerging, evolved woman. What is this she wants? How do you rise to meet her? Clearly this, this conscious, empowered woman is a different breed. And she wants, needs, demands different things of a man who she's going to welcome into her temple, so to speak. How do you meet that? How do you meet her at, um, physically, sexually, intellectually, emotionally, spiritually? So. Those are the areas that I like to dive into with the Evolved Masculine Path. I've been running it in, uh, based in California for the past three and a half years, and really with this, this moment, uh, together with Dave McDermott here, stand up for a moment. <laughs> I'll pull you up a little bit more in a bit. Uh, we're launching EMP, the Evolved Masculine Path, EMP, or Electromagnetic Pulse. <laughs> Um, EMP Australia right now and uh, you all have, have the opportunity to be part of that inaugural pulse <laughs> that inaugural uh, launch and one of the beautiful things about being part of an inaugural group is that your presence within the group helps shape what the group becomes and so um, Near the end of this, uh, we're gonna pass out some like just sheets so that you can put your name, email, and phone number uh, if you want uh, Dave or myself to follow up with you. Dave's helping hold it down here, where I'll be flying back out for the retreat weekend as part of it, and it, it's a multi-layered piece. But it's it's taking all these things that we're starting to get it into here uh, and uh, helping you clear shame, own yourself own your power, own your sex, own your desires, and become who you know you're here to be. More on that in a bit. Over here, next, with Felix. Yes. Uh, um, I mean, I have to say, I, I mean, of course, with most of your analysis, I, I totally agree, you know? And then at the same time, I have I, to feel... I, I knew I was going to get challenged. Go for it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so I knew I was going to get challenged. Go for it. You know, but uh, then, then I felt so much loneliness also, you know? And like, I mean, you're Americans, you're with these superheroes all the time, you know? You brought us <laughs> Superman <laughs> and Batman, and now you bring us the evolved masculine. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's like another challenge, challenge, you know? Wow, now we have to again strive alone and save the world, you know? And I think like, I mean, how, do you really need it? You know, I mean, that's what not enough, you know? I mean, where's this thing, like you said, okay, we were trained to serve the moment, and, and I mean, I do very similar stuff in the Buddha in a way, you know? I question myself, some, is it, am I still just there, like, developing a new masculine who serves the woman instead of, you know, giving up the loneliness, and seeing that we're social beings, you know, and that this idea of we as men save the world is just the bullshit, you know, and we just have to Thank you, Felix. I'm sure I'm a product of my time and place in this world. I'm not going to deny that. I used to feel very lonely, and particularly this feeling around for at least 20 years. Well, no, because it's not true anymore. <laughs> Starting maybe 20 years ago, I would feel a burden around the state of the world, being so very aware that things were not the way that I felt that they could be. And at the time, feeling so lonely, because it just seemed like everybody just seemed fine with it. And with that, I felt even greater responsibility that 
I have to do something, and that this is my responsibility, ultimately leading to a hardcore martyr complex that uh, thankfully, well, while I got past it, the process was not pretty. <laughs> I don't feel lonely at all anymore, because I'm not alone in doing this. Neither, are, neither am I asking for you to be alone in doing this. One of the things I, I, that I'm so appreciative of, as much as perhaps my ego liked the, you know, the savior complex component, you know, it was so much more beautiful and powerful than that, was realizing it, this is not about me changing the world, this is about us. We are doing it. And there are more and more and more and more people stepping up to, to that call. People all over the world. And I've been, I've been in this game for quite a while, and it seems very clear to me that it's growing. The people who are, who are part of what I also refer to as like the consciousness movement, those who, who identify with or otherwise are Focus on how do we evolve our consciousness? How do we connect with one another? How do we, women, women and men together, link arms? How do we recognize our interconnectedness with one another, with this planet, with all that is? And how do we restructure everything on the planet to reflect that understanding? So again, it's not about me. It's not about lowercase you. It's, yes, when I say you, I mean you individually, and you collectively, we, us all. Last night when we were doing the circle and we had to do the dark masculine, I found that fuck, I had such a strong dark masculine. I wanted to pin the, the man to the Just hold the mic closer. I wanted to pin the man to the wall there. And it was scary. Like my male energy has been so nurtured because I have to fucking stand up and go out and do blockades, look after kids, and do it all. So I'm asking. Stick together. We're tired. I want to be soft. It took me a while to learn to be soft. Because I fucking want to kill! <laughs> and I could see the man in front of me. I had him pinned to the, to the side. <laughs> that was scary for me to see that in myself. And it took me a while. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just going to go around over here, and then uh, this man here, and then over to you. I assume what you're saying is really applying not just to men, but also to women. Um, and that we women also have to find an inner evolved masculine as well. That's one thing, yeah. and uh, the other thing I want to know is how do we as women yeah. in our feminine support masculinity and mas the masculine to evolve? Yeah, they're both big questions. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you for that. It was a very intentional choice of my, I, I got you. <laughs> um, it was a very intentional choice of mine to bring my focus to men. And um, honestly, initially it was very difficult for me because I love women so much. And I love working with women, and it's fun, and it's sexy, and it just leaves me feeling so... <clears throat> and I gave it up because <laughs> I, well, because I kept hearing from women, we need more men. We need more men like this, we need more men who can hold this. And so, uh, yes, I focus my message primarily towards men, though um, I do feel like as this further develops, I need to find a, a way to uh, weave the whole back 
feeling better. So I thank you for that. Um, yes, I absolutely believe this is on all of us, not, not just men to change the world. I think that we have different and overlapping roles. And as I said, I really view a, well, there are ways in which I feel like women are doing it. I feel like women are doing it. Right now, right now, in, in this moment, there are, in the US, there are women taking uh, uh, airplane loads full of women from every city of the country to DC right now for this uh, multi-hundred thousand plus uh, women's march on, on DC. Um, I, my Facebook feed is filled with, with photos from, from planes, like normal planes, like Southwest plane or, you know, the equivalent of Qantas or what have you, um, where the, the plane itself is more than 90% women all heading to, to this march. Like, it's indicative, like, women are rising up. I, I very much see that, very much believe that, and I have a lot of faith in that. In my, in my work and in my field, God, there, there's at least 10 women's groups for every one man, men's. So it's more that I'm just, I'm focusing on my part and our, uh, and aware that my part, our part has to interweave with women's part. I'm happy to point you to resources. <laughs> and your second one, if, uh, what do you, what about women, what can women do to support men in uh, rising into their evolved masculine? Is that correct? You know, there are, the men might not fully like this answer. There are two prime ways in which women support men into becoming more of who they're capable of being. Um, one is through nurturance and support, and uh, I love it. It's, um, I'll actually get back to this because this is where I mostly want to be. <laughs> um, it feels so, so good, so supportive, so uh, held. The other way, Though honestly, that I cannot deny because I'm so aware of how she played such a powerful role in my own development, what was through challenge, was through Kali, was through the ways in which she, capital S she, um, in all her different forms, basically, aside from asking or requesting or calling forth, demanded it of me. Refused to accept anything less. And this wasn't fun. <laughs> um, this part of my journey was hard. It was extremely confronting. Um, it brought up all of my own feelings of shame and not enoughness and unworthiness stuff. But, at the same time, it was a powerful reflection. And I didn't shy away from that reflection. I allowed my love and desire for women to inspire me to do the painful work. To look at what myself in the places that I didn't want to look. So I, I, I feel it's important for me to raise that part because as men, you have experienced both. And that second one, um, it's taken me a long time to really value, but they both shaped me. And I honor and appreciate you women, women for all of that. Thank you, one second. Um,
stay on to the nurturance and supportive side. See it in him. People have a tendency to rise up to the expectations that we have of them. People also have a tendency to sink down to the expectations we have of them. So what else can you do? Heal your relationship to the masculine. Trust him. Practice trusting his process. See that which is, which is good in him. And at times call him out as needed for what's less than that. Okay, I know we've got, I'm gonna do my best here. I need to go to you next. Are we next? And Peter? <laughs> I'm trying to be too long winded for this, but in my journey, I've learned that quite a bit. But we grew up, we evolved, and that's how we became involved much. We evolved in a group, you know, a polyamorous situation with women, women looking up, which nurturing the children, and the males, which are basically disposable. They were so when the slave to tiger came in, great mother earth, a woman stepped up and went protesting. I see that out of sense, I see an Arab right there. All the lock ons are women. The men are stepping up. Um, and during my failed marriage, I learned a little bit. Um, so when the woman gets in her fem female, in her feminine situation, don't join her there. You've got to step up. So when the woman puts a test on you to see whether, whether you are the man, she says there's a sacred tooth tiger there, you go and deal with it. If you don't go and deal with it, you then she steps up in the masculine, goes and does what has to be done. Um, so recognising this test and uh, how these tests work, one of the big tests in my, in, in my early marriage was I used to do a bit of flying, recreational flying. And after my children were born, um, my wife then came to me and, and said, look, I want you to stop flying. So learning to recognise these tests, and, and it's, it's not the woman's job to lift the man up. It's the man's job to keep the woman, to have the woman be the woman by filling the masculine role, so she doesn't have to fill it. Thank you. Thank you. Is that clear? Is yeah, that's clear. Yeah. I'm going to let that stand on its own. Um, thank you. Um, let me be aware of time a lot here. Okay, so uh, I want to bring you in next. Thank you. Uh, oh, sorry, just before you speak, I wanted to say this thing around the, the evolved masculine. One thing I want to make clear is I am not standing here as the evolved masculine. The evolved masculine, as I view it, is, is an archetype. Think of it as a lighthouse. Or North Star, a, an archetypal, uh, a vision of possibility. That's a journey to walk in the direction of, rather than a, a place that you'll ever arrive. If you've ever ar arrived there, revision. The path of self mastery is never ending. and still can be their power and stand alongside them and be strong. Thank you. Very well said. I think that the... As men, who we choose to be at our side says a lot about us. 
She's a woman who can challenge you. A woman whose power inspires your own. A woman whose gifts impress you. In days of mm, of having your woman as to the arm candy, um, woman as this is your representative of your social status. These are part of our old paradigms that we're stepping away from. As we're realizing, seeing, experiencing just how much woman is capable of being and bringing. Have a partner who can really be a partner who meets you and who you can meet, who challenges and inspires you. I have two questions. In your view, does the evolved masculine involve the bringing of violence? That's my first question. Do you want me to do them individually or? <laughs> yeah, I okay. do. I hope not. Um, you may get sometimes I feel very troubled by, um, by the world today, much more in the past few months. Um, definitely much more in the past few months than in the de decade previously. Um, and uh, I live in a country where half the population is armed, a, a significant portion heavily armed, a government that carries more firepower than the rest of the world combined. And so there it is this, I don't believe that it's possible to create the world that we want to live in by meeting them there. Um, for one, we'd lose. They're really good at that game. They've been playing it a long time. It is their preferred territory. I don't fully have the answer as to what then instead Honestly, I think women are going to have a very large part to do with <laughs> that answer and how it comes about. I just want to help create the conditions to support that. So your answer is no? I believe so. I believe so, no. I need to uh, close this section and move into our next. Uh, we'll have... Um, around for the rest of the weekend. I leave immediately after. Um, but there are other things I want to do with you all. The Evolved Masculine. We ended up going very deeply into um, the call. Um, the call to rise up, step up, to claim your power, to um, be a stand. And this is part, part of the Evolved Masculine. As we move through that brief little um, visual or explanation, perhaps there were things that have resonated for you, stirred some pieces up inside of you. I'm going to do a version of my proper guide visualization for you to meet this man, or perhaps the man you're calling in. So, why don't we just stand up real quick and just give a quick stretch. And as you're ready, 
Bring your eyes to a close once more. And as you do so, allow your breathing to slow down and deepen. Watch that breath, witness it. Witness the separation between each inhalation and each exhalation. Allowing each breath to get slower and deeper than the one before. As you breathe in, that chi, that prana, that universal life force energy itself, filling your body, filling your being with that light, with that capacity, with that power. And with each exhale, release it, letting go. Letting go of what no longer serves you, letting go of old stories, old limitations, old ideas of who you are, or what you are capable of or not capable of. Letting that go. Letting that go. Letting that go. Once you breathe in new possibilities of what you have been inspired by, what you have felt sparked within you. And what if those little sparks that you felt today caught fire? Burned brightly. Who is this man that you would draw in? Who is this man that you would become? What does your evolved masculine archetype look like? And as you stay with this breath slower and deeper, but you imagine, visualize, see in your mind's eye a door before you. Notice this door. How large is this door? How small is this door? What color is it? What's typical about it? What's unusual about it? Is there a knocker or a doorknob or a bell? Just notice these doors. And you raise your fist to knock, but you don't quite yet because you feel that sensation in your belly. You know that sensation, somewhere between nervousness and excitement. Because you know who lives on the other side of this door. Because on the other side of this door lives you, or a version of you anyway. This version of you on the other side of this door is your evolved masculine archetype. That version of you who has been through everything that you have been through, he's experienced everything that you've experienced in this life, and he has evolved beyond. Whatever your stories of limitation were, wherever your struggles, your pain points that you've been holding on to are, he had them. He's just now on the other side of that. This is the man on the other side of the story. That version of you who is solid in himself, who owns himself, who knows his values, his principles, what he's a stand for. That version of you who's safe and secure in his being and helps others feel safe and secure around him. That version of you who owns his sexuality, his creativity, his power, his capacity to make things happen. That version of you who lives in his heart, loves, allows love, that version of you who's fully expressed in his, in, 
in his authenticity, speaks his truth, lives a life of integrity. That version of you who's fiercely intellectual and a powerful intuition and stillness of the mind. That version of you who's connected to source, life, universe, divinity. And so, you knock. And you hear the footsteps coming to the door. And the door slowly opens. As the door opens, you see this figure standing there, bathed in light. Powerful. Radiant. What is the first thing that you notice about this being? What is he wearing? What does he adorn himself with? What little accessories might he have on? A watch, a band, a ring, a pendant, a necklace, an earring, or anything? How does he have his hair? His facial hair? Notice any of those things that might be different than how you have presented yourself in the past. You make eye contact, gazing into his left eye as he gazes into yours. And it's as, if, as soon as you made that eye contact, you felt this electricity between your eyes. This Locked into this gaze, you feel him. You feel him feeling you. Notice that energy that he emanates. It's as if he is so full of these resources and attributes that he's cultivated that he generously shares them with you simply by holding this gaze. The longer you hold this gaze, each breath that you breathe in, you take in more of this way of being, this energy that he holds, rising up to meet it, being entrained to that vibration. You notice and feel your posture shifting, your head being held taller, your facial features relaxing. As you stand there, eye to eye, with this powerful man, they say that the eyes are the gateway to the soul. Allow this gaze to be a physical, experiential exploration of that phrase. As you gaze to the depths of his soul and he gazes into yours, recognize the irony that it's the same soul, isn't it? That he is simply another representation of your core essence. He that you see, I can't see. People around you can't see, only you can see. He comes from you, he's within you, he is you. Hold that gaze, breathe him in. And notice right now a particular attribute that really impacts you. What do you see in him that inspires you, that activates something in you, maybe even triggers you? Focus in on one attribute right now. Where do you feel that attribute in your body? Touch that part of you right now. And as you hold that posture, touch that point, see him before you, he says something to you, I like to call it a power phrase. It's something short, simple, to the point. It's exactly what you need to hear right now. 
Speak that power phrase out loud. What does he say to you? Yeah. If you dropped your hand, touch that point again, gaze deep into his eyes, feel that attribute, and speak that phrase again, this time owning it even more fully. Everybody's saying their own thing, nobody's really listening to you. Own it, claim it, speak it. Yes. Drop your hands. And we're gonna do a third time in a moment. And what we're doing right now is we're really anchoring this feeling, this knowing that you have within you, being in his presence. That which you feel, that which is activated. And on three, we're gonna to touch that point. Focus in on seeing him eye to eye in that, that sense of that gaze. Standing in your most powerful, confident posture. And call it forth with that phrase as you anchor and feel that into you right now. See it, feel it, speak it. One, two, three. The truth of me! Breathe it in. This is you. This is you. You have the ability at any moment to call him forth, to bring him back in front of you, to see him, to experience, to get this reminder, to explore new aspects of his being, to cultivate the friendship, the relationship, to own him more and more. Use this anger. Touch the point, see him before you, speak the phrase, feel it in your body. Feeling the ground beneath your feet, having an awareness of those to your left, those to your right, those in front of you and behind you, wiggling your fingers, and as you're ready, allow your eyes to open once again. <laughs> Check it out. <laughs> mm. As you're ready, take a seat once more. So that was a mini version of that kind of visualization. We went much further into that other train than I intended. <laughs> so it's, uh, with that vision of this evolved masculine archetype, this evolved archetype of your own being, is foundational to the evolved masculine path. There are many pieces on top of it, and there are many different tools and techniques that we've developed to help you own him. To take from gaining that, that clarity of vision, each, vis each visitation, you can crystallize the details of him more and more and more in different environments, in different types of situations. And through that, practice trying him on. What is it like to be him for a minute, an hour at home by yourself, an hour taking a step out into the world? What is it to practice being him for a full day? A week. And through this type of a practice, within a supportive environment, a community of other men who are on a, a similar path, we go much further than 
probably realizing it's possible. So this is the call and invitation. Um, we don't have a lot of time left. Uh, to my right, to your left, is Dave McDermott again. Dave came into my life in September. And at the time, I'm going to make you stop thinking. <laughs> um, at the time, he was hurting, arguably lost and confused, and uh, hired me at my highest, okay, elite level, and has moved very rapidly. And I wanted to share a little bit about his story, his experience of uh, his own transformation, which as far as it's come already, and it's come far, <laughs> it's still just getting started. Thank you, brother. So, um, yeah, I was, I was hurting in September when I met this guy, um, particularly around confidence with women, which is one of the, the three prongs of the evolved masculine part. Um, so my story is I grew up with a bunch of sexual repression and I didn't realise until I dug into a whole bunch of stuff um, on a coaching course in LA in September that um, that had caused a whole bunch of sexual shame which um, yeah, really came up for me very strongly and a lot of anger around that. Um, I had a semi-religious type of upbringing growing up in a cult. Um, so, that, yeah, that, that led to fundamentally a lack of confidence in myself as a sexual being. And a feeling of being undesirable, unlovable. These were very familiar feelings to me. <laughs> um, and it was very painful. And I kind of accepted it as normal. But always had a vision of um, moving past it and through it. But, yeah, like I spiralled into often places of feeling helpless, like there was you know, nothing I could do. Um, but I was a determined little bugger, and I kept trying different things. And uh, I, um, I, I had a lot of successes and moved through a bunch of stuff in different ways and on my own as well, not just with support, um, which I'm proud of. But I, if, when I, in September, I met this guy, tapped into a bunch of sexual shame, as I said. I finally, the void, that void in me, was finally um, addressed when, uh, when I learned what it meant to be vulnerable. And I'll share a little story. Okay. Yes. I'm sure of time, but the way that this guy can work is um, he sent me a challenge one day to go out and approach. Okay, I'm, I'm hoping we can hear backtrack a little bit. Okay. He was, through his previous work, doing a lot of uh, approaches with, with women, uh, being challenged to go up and start conversations and engage with women. And this is not my general way that I work with men. I'm like, okay, if you're going to do that, here is your challenge. Yeah. Good point. Um, so this was um, to my story. Um, so his challenge to me was to go up to um, about 10 women in a, in a single day and say something like this, introduce myself. Hi, how are you going? My name's Dave. Um, I'm working with a coach to get over a bunch of stories I was told as a kid that it held me back from being confident with women. How's your day going? <laughs> um, and I felt enormous resistance to doing that. And, um, a lot of shame, a lot of fear. And, uh, I'm curious how you would feel about taking on something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but what I found was um, I actually got a really positive response, which was amazing. <laughs> so, um, that, yeah, that was a big part of a 
about, amongst a bunch of other things, just really bringing into light these stories I was told from the, from being from when I was a little boy. Yeah, so, what, did that, what was the result of that challenge? What I know that something big shifted inside of you. What was that something? Hmm. Um, feeling what it felt like to be authentic in front of a woman, and just actually realizing shit. You know, why I knew that I was, but. You know, feeling finally like there's nothing left to hide. Um, I'm here, I'm vulnerable, um, and I'm not ashamed of anything anymore. And that just felt fucking amazing. And that came along with um, a real insight through the Mankind Project when I first engaged with them that uh, I'd been very ashamed of this part of my story, the sexual repression, and uh, that I'd been burying that under a rug, and that it um, led to this feeling of like, there's a part of me I don't want particularly women to see. Um, so where are you now? What's life like for Dave McDermott today? Um, a very different place. <laughs> so, when, I, when all this shit came up for me, I, I've been burning my whole adult life to find a sense of purpose, and I've tried a lot of things. And um, I, I got very clear, and it, it was just, uh, massive, my heart, as it's happened a few times in my life, just came to clarity that I want to work with men around sexuality, men who've um, experienced the kind of pain that I was familiar with in the past, to get over that, that shit and um, come to a place of authenticity, come to a place of, um, yeah, being totally accepting of themselves, full of self love and then uh, enjoying the beauty of being magnetic in that way, radiating presence. Um, I was really clear about that, but I was still in all this shit. <laughs> so then I started a journey of getting over that. Um, I dived deep, in, I, not deep yet, on the journey. I dived straight into um, the world of sacred sexuality. This is me coming here as part of that journey. And um, work, you know, work, attended a lot of workshops in the last three or four months. This is all fairly recent for me. Um, and working with this guy was a huge part of going deep into my sexual shame and um, just bringing that up into the light over and over and over. Um, so now, your question, where am I now? Where are you? Um, abundance. Hmm. And, yeah, um, just understanding how to connect with women in a way that is uh, very powerful and totally authentic. Yeah, there's such a difference in the, the man who, like uh, two days or three days ago, I saw him in, per in person versus Skype for the first time since that first meeting in September. And the man that I met in September felt very insecure, very lost, very confused, um, dis disempowered, um, and then the the men, while we work together, there's always it's always different when you're when you get that physical presence. I'm like, fuck, you feel like a different man. You feel so much more solid, solid in yourself, like a a knowing of yourself. And with that. Like, yeah, I've watched as well your engagements with different people, men and women, through the, through this weekend, and it's night and day. Just your ease in your being, your confidence in self, your potency um, uh, in your interactions. And so this gets back to the question that, that you are asking about how can a woman support a man to step into this. The truth is, this is what anybody, man or, woman or man, can do to support another person to stepping into this, see, help them see what's possible for themselves, and hold, help hold that vision with them. And now, uh, Dave is helping me launch this uh, Evolved Masculine Path Australia. So we've passed around these sheets, so we've passed around these sheets. Uh, you don't, by putting your name and info on there, it's, you're not, uh, committing in this moment that yes, I uh, I'm in. Uh, it's basically saying you're you're signaling interest that you want to know more, you want to explore, and uh, 
what I, I'm going to be traveling with my uh, other parts of my work and with my own coaches uh, over this upcoming week. Um, but uh, we've set it up for Dave has uh, created a, a bunch of slots in this upcoming week to uh, dive in with with uh, you uh, on the phone or Skype or if you're local to him in person uh, to get clear on where are you at? What came up for you during this session? You call this a masculine empowerment session. What, is, what does your evolved masculine archetype look like, feel like, sound like? What will it take for you to commit to stepping into him? 